Sane Occultism by Dion Fortune Narrated by Matthew Schmitz 15. Mental Trespassing The realization of the power of thought is widespread, and there are many people who not only carefully avoid doing positive harm to others by their wrong thinking, but seek to do active good by their right thinking, and the question arises, how far is one justified in using the power of concentrated thought to help another? Many people will think this is an absurd question. Of course, one is justified in doing good, in season and out of season, but the problem is not quite so simple as all that. Let us take a concrete instance, which may come close home to us. Supposing someone, who still adheres to the orthodox ways of thinking from which the reader of these pages has presumably broken away, should elect to save your soul from damnation by concentrating on you and giving you telepathic suggestion to the effect that you could not assimilate this line of thought, would you welcome the interference? Would you not rather consider it a most unwarrantable intrusion upon your freedom of action and the integrity of your soul? How, then, do you suppose it might appear to other people if you, even with the best of intentions, sent mental messages to their subconscious mind designed to bring about a change in their condition? It may be laid down as a maxim in spiritual healing that no one has the right to apply any alternative mental treatment to another without that person's consent. Is it too much to expect that you should write to that person, stating what you propose to do, and obtain his consent before you submit him to a course of treatment? If you have any reason to suspect that such consent might not be forthcoming, is that a justification for giving the treatment without his knowledge? How would you feel about it if such methods were applied to yourself? Supposing you were engaged in some delicate and difficult process of training in order to obtain the higher consciousness, and someone sent concentrated mental messages to you which disturbed your concentration and spoilt your experiment, would you not feel that you had just cause for complaint? It has been argued that surely anybody would welcome relief from pain, but this is far from being the case. Many people have profound religious convictions and would consider such interference blasphemous. Even if we do not agree with them, we ought to respect their opinions. Do not forget that when we concentrate upon another person and thereby effect a rapport, that such a rapport continues after the treatment is finished. Next time we concentrate, we shall get through more easily. An interchange of mental content has taken place between mind and mind, and this continues to flow backwards and forwards, like the tides through a strait, unless there is sufficient understanding of the technique of the operation to know how to shut down at the conclusion of a treatment. Moreover, although the healer may be able to shut down and prevent any emanation of his patient's mind from touching his own consciousness, the patient is not usually in a position to do so in regard to his healer. Especially is this the case when the treatment is administered without the knowledge of the patient. A person who has once had such a rapport established between his subconscious mind and the mind of another will have undergone a marked increase of telepathic sensitiveness, and anyone else will find it much easier to establish a similar rapport. Have we the right to produce this sensitization in anyone without their consent? Supposing that such an interchange of mental content as we have described takes place between two people whose viewpoint is antagonistic, Great confusion and conflict are caused in the mind of the patient. His judgment is clouded and his will deflected from its purpose. Is there anybody who has sufficient wisdom to know the needs of another soul? They must be judged according to evolutionary development. The particular karmic debt that soul is working out at the moment, its general karmic position, derived from the aggregate of the causes set going in numberless past lives, all interacting among themselves, reinforcing and counteracting each other, some coming into action at one moment, some at another, as the planetary conditions influence the individual horoscope. Until you have diagnosed these conditions, you would do well to refrain from operating upon them. If your mental power is sufficient to heal when rightly applied, it is sufficient to make confusion more confounded when wrongly applied. There is but one safe way to apply spiritual forces impersonally, and that is to invoke God's love and commit the soul to God's hands.